I'm Nicole Hyman at HTC. We're connecting for you. What if I told you there's a place just outside of Georgetown where you can see wild animals up close and personal? Would you believe me? Well, it's true, and that place is called Essie Cares. However, there's more to this story than you think. You see, Essie Cares is not a zoo. It's actually a wildlife refuge and rehab center that's always in need of a helping hand. We worked with wildlife. We took wildlife rehab classes and we wanted to, you know, give back to the community and help raise uh, and release orphaned uh, uh, possums and squirrels. But we worked a hotline with that group and in that, uh, on the hotline we would get just as many calls for exotic animals that people could no longer keep or didn't want or the person that had them died. There's a lot of different uh, reasons that there's a need for them to have a place to go and there was no, there was no place. So Skip and I realized that there was a need and, and we just, we talked about it. it. Took about five years for us to find the property and we sold everything we had and moved here and opened SC Care so we could be a place for them to go. A sanctuary, a true sanctuary, is to take in these animals and give them a lifelong place to be for the rest of their lives. And so many of these, especially the parrots whose lives or lifespans are 60, 80, and 100 years, have been through three, four, and five homes already. They've been passed around and passed around, and um, that's why a lot of them that we've taken in have plucked their feathers because it's it's stressful for them to make changes. They're not like, they, they don't like change. Most of them um, are social animals. Mm -hmm. They like and, bonding with somebody. And then with um, dog and cat rescues, they adopt out, which is a, a means um, of funding. And it also helps them with turnover. They're, they're able to uh, go out and rescue more. Whereas where we've capped out at this point, you know, without further funding or more help here, you know, and it's been a challenge to, to find people that are willing to come out here and help us with these animals. Even though they love animals more than just about anything, when you do something that you really like to do for seven days with no breaks, it, it gets, gets to you. Uh, I work uh, six days and take one day off on Sundays if nothing's going on, but to uh, have to face this, even though this is your goal in life to do it every day, it, it becomes a problem. I volunteer one day a week, probably average five hours. Mm -hmm. And I also uh, have a donation box collection run where I go to the different stores in Pauly's and Merle's Inlet, uh, collect the money from the donation boxes. And I volunteer two days a week. My husband comes with me on Sunday and volunteers and, you know, for a few hours each time. And as I say, it, it just makes your day complete to have, I work, we work with the birds mainly, and just to have been with them and gotten to bond with some of them is a wonderful, wonderful experience. I mean, the, you know, exotics, and you look at birds or snakes and um, the tortoises, they are not uh, cute and cuddly. And we have uh, run into situations where people find out we're doing exotics and not doing dogs and cats, which people can relate to. You know, you can pick them up, you can pet them, you can have them on your lap, and they're cute and cuddly. But they didn't want to participate, and they didn't want to... Uh, help us because we're not a dog and cat and it's it's become very apparent that they uh, people need to broaden their circle of compassion to exactly. include exotics and domestics We 
tapped out at this point, you know, without further funding or more help here, you know, and it's been a challenge to, to find people that are willing to come out here and help us with these animals. Um, but, you know, we, we can't take in any more, which kind of for us feeds that we're really making a difference for these animals, at least for the one we're able to help right then. But, you know, we've helped at this point all we can help. i tell you what would help us the most is we need some money for an employee. And if we could get a number of sponsors that would uh, say, be willing to sign up for a $10 a month donation, that would give us a, a budget that we can work with. So if we had 100 sponsors or 100 people that would sign up for $10, and we have some, five or six, I can count them on one hand, um, then we would know what we have coming in and be able to maybe secure some, some help, dependable help. If you'd like more information on how you can help, or if you just want to pay a visit to SC Cares, check out their website or give them a call. HTC Connecting for You, I'm Nicole Hyman.